Welcome back, anime peoples. And non anime and peoples, non-anime peoples who get are the just fuck checking out. Whoa! This channel's not for you. Whoa! Well, not right now, it is. It will be later. Well, no, I mean, we gotta at least encourage them to keep watching. Jeez. It's true. So I have to show Because, I mean, the, the series is super awesome. And the series you, pretty, it's pretty ubiquitous at this point, yeah. Yeah, and if you don't watch it, what the hell's wrong with you? Watch it. I'll like, give, stop I'll, watching I'll this right you, now. I'll give you my Crunchyroll account. <laughs> not really, though. No, not really. Unless though. I know you, but then maybe. So while I was testing our new mic cover to make sure the audio worked, yeah. I found my favorite team up super in the whole game. Yeah. But it's using two villains, so they're not going to be in story mode. So oh. I just wanted to take this brief opportunity to show everyone All this right. amazing thing. So sh show it off. Also, it actually unlocks everyone for you automatically just in free play. Like just oh, that's here. awesome. Including dudes you haven't gotten to yet and the DLC only part for Jetro. Nice. So yeah, the pair up is Dio Dio. No. <laughs> oh, is it this Dio and then the horse racing Dio? No, and uh, oh, one Dio. Okay. So original Dio and Dio with Joe Star's body. Correct. Oh, this is so exciting. Also, on the stage select screen, it actually tells you exactly what the hazards are, oh. which is really useful. And there's some that I don't think we actually do in story mode, like the Death 13's Nightmare World. Oh. Where he actually appears and attacks people. I don't think this appears in story mode at all. Probably <laughs> not. Uh, that's another good one. The the part five Coliseum, where Chariot Requiem eventually shows up, and if you get near it, you fall asleep. Oh boy. But I'm just gonna beat him up till I get a super and try to land it. All right. It's it's the it's sickest. really good. Yeah, the sickest just and the, the strongest. strongest. He's not wrong. <coughs> oh god, I'm dying. Oh, don't die. Don't don't be alarmed if I sound funnier than usual. Funny haha, -ha, funny weird. Both? Okay. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm trying to step up my game while I'm feeling sick. Yeah. Which is the worst time to be doing it, but fuck it. That's true. So last I mean, yeah, there's actually like intro dialogue for two Dio's. <laughs> oh great, now they're teaming up. So last night I was on Tuck's stream while we were doing Tabletop Simulator. Mm -hmm. uh, we played Betrayal and... Did you actually get the expansion? Not yet. Oh, okay. I plan on doing it at some point, but I want to... We still have tons of them at that Z, so... I, I really want to... Look at how short the cooldown... Also, it gives you max uh, ability trees for everybody in versus mode. It's like you have everything. Nice. So look at how fast the, the cooldown is on the knife toss. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Oh, but... For those of you uninitiated, Betrayal is a survival horror board game with lots and lots of different little stories. The first half... You're exploring a mansion that is unique every time you do it. And then about halfway through, everything changes and somebody turns out to be the bad guy. And it's awesome because really no two games wind up the same. And because not all the scenarios necessarily are the same type of thing either. So right. some really weird stuff. So unfortunately, I ended up doing fuck all that game. I took my first turn. I explored two rooms, and the one, and the way the game works is every time you either get an item, reveal an omen, or, or, uh, run out of movement, your turn ends. So I hit a room, an event happened, I got stuck in web. Okay. And I failed the strength roll to break out of it. And I continued to fail for the next three turns. Isn't that fun? I remember we had one um, one time, I forget who I was playing with, but we got the one where there's gas filling the mansion mm -hmm. and you have to play a certain key string on the piano to get out. Yep. But it's like an intelligence check to do the piano. Yep. I think this was a Becker, because I think it was down to me and Tuck still alive. Mm -hmm. And like... We had the first aid kit, and the way that game works, you can pass it around 
and like use it again. Yep. So we were keeping alive on the poison that way and just like doing our 10% dice rolls until we eventually won. <laughs> oh. So it took like 20 minutes of trying. All right, let's see if I can land this. It needs to not be blocking though. Come here, you fucker. Get over here. Come on. Quit being a wimp. Quit being a weenie. Stop blocking oh, like a big he hero. He's like, nah, I don't want this. Oh, he knew a power-up existed because he's psychic, and so he had to go get it. Oh, here this we go! so good. Oh my god, that's so <laughs> fucking cool! That's so good. That's a really good. That's it. That's all we came here for. Holy shit! That just took him and from one, one full bar. And it's one you'll never see in story mode, and it's like the best one. Oh my god. Okay, so anyway, I proceeded to fail getting out of the webs. So I was stuck in that room. Everybody else was like flung to the far corners of the mansion. Was it kind of like the situation we were in, where like you could keep trying? Yeah. But you just have like a almost zero percent chance of getting it so you just kind of it, it wasn't it wasn't an almost zero percent chance i just kept fucking up the roll that bad oh every time like it was a roll that's winnable but it oh it's easily happening. winnable but i kept getting oh. blank sides on the dice <laughs> which is zero so by the time i broke out the traitor had been re Ooh. the traitor had been revealed and it was tuck and he was playing the old man and it was the scenario where he turns invisible, and his goal is to murder us all. Okay. I don't think I've had that one. Like, that's basically it. And the only way to find out who it is, or not who it is, but where he is, because he, re he removes himself from the board. Mm. And he can move around at will across the mansion. So when he attacks you, he doesn't get retaliated against. Mm -hmm. So he's pretty much guaranteed to basically kill somebody every turn. Okay. And the, the only way to figure out where he is is make an, a knowledge roll after you get attacked on his turn. Mm -hmm. And based on how well you do is the level of information you get. Yep. So I was... As soon as I got out of the web, he immediately went to me and attacked me. Joke's on that fucker, because I found him exactly where he was. Oh, that's hilarious. And he nearly died until his turn. Like, I, I failed to get to him in time, because I had to spread the damage around. Yep. If I had actually been able to reach him, he would have died. But our other two teammates were wailing on him until it was his turn, and then he just noped the fuck out of there. <laughs> After stealing somebody's spear, which made him way more powerful. Yeah. <laughs> so he was just doing these deadly butt pokes out of nowhere. Poke. Poke your butt. So now we're in part seven. This is the stupid horse race across America one in the oh reboot universe. So it's like the movie Hidalgo. <laughs> this is the, where the the holy course parts actually are a part of the actual story. Oh, I see. So anyway, he systematically bad, started yeah. taking out every single one of them except for me. Because I wound up in the basement with no way to get back up. Nah. And he was like, if I go down there, I'll get stuck down there. Yeah, why Because he, he can't explore new rooms. Oh, really? He's only limited to yeah. what's revealed. Okay. So if he went down there to kill me before killing everybody else, he would have uh, gotten stuck. Yeah. And everybody else could have just wandered around upstairs <laughs> until they got... the fuck they want. Until they got perfectly armed to beat him. Oh, that's really funny. And I was the last one left alive. Mm. And he didn't even kill me. I got an item that was like this flask that I could drink. And if I rolled well enough, it would restore health and give me stats. Yep. Again, in, in Balrog fashion, I rolled like shit. It's like, and it I, killed I like me. the drink, you just like have the vial up and you're just like, ugh, like in your forehead and just like fail. 
You so you catch a couple droplets as it dribbles down your face, and you don't get the whole thing. Accidentally get glass in my mouth, swallow it, cut my esophagus up. <laughs> so I I ended up fucking dying alone in the basement <laughs> after drinking something strange. What a way to go. And like he was he was upstairs, he had everybody's crap because he was stealing stuff before attacking people. Yeah. Because he could just yoink it without any repercussions. Mm-hmm. You fucking died by yourself in a basement, sad and alone. <laughs> well, actually, technically not alone. I had found the madman. Oh, okay, you had a buddy. I, I had a, I had a crazy buddy who probably like picked me up after and started dragging me around. He's like, <laughs> acting like I was still alive. He's like, man, like Swiss Army men. Yeah. <laughs> you sure are awful quiet, buddy. Because the, the issue is, I, when I picked up the madman, I got an extra might, but I lost a sanity. And mm -hmm. the potion that I drank damaged my sanity. And oh. it knocked me down to zero That's on sanity. Funny. I went crazy. You went crazy in that basement. Like, it's a very winnable scenario. It's just, it was heavily stacked in his favor. Yeah. So the entire game, like, the game lasted, like, six or seven turns, four of which I was trapped, <laughs> and then the other three I was in the basement, oh. dying alone. Good job. You saved the world. It's a fun game, guys. No, that's actually the only board game I like, so. So Johnny Joestar's stand is called Tusk. It lets him shoot his fingernails like bullets. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't know how, if that hurts or how fast they regrow or what. Ah, uh, that's disgusting. Jo Johnny, you gross. Horses are weird. Yes, they are, especially with their backwards knees. Yes. I have only been on a horse maybe twice in my life, and both times were utterly terrifying. Because uh, I was zero very young. for me, probably because it sounds utterly terrifying. One of my my one of my aunts and uncles had a farm, and they had a number of horses among other animals. Mm. And they thought, as because all my other siblings growing up were like outdoorsy and liked physical activities, gross. They. They would frequently ride horses and like be taught how to do stuff, and then when it came time for me to be old enough, they would just be like, hey, you want to ride a horse? And I was like, no, sure you do, buddy! And they'd pick me up, put me on the back, and I immediately started screaming, because I hated heights as a kid. Yep. I still don't really like them, but I tolerate them. And then the horse started getting concerned kind of mincing and like shifting its weight which made me even more worried because I felt like I was going to fall off. Mm -hmm. Like the horse was just going to fall over. <laughs> the horse just DDTs and body slams you into the ground. <laughs> Thankfully it didn't because I probably would have a like a leg brace to this Suplex day. by the horse. Like I would probably have been fucked up irreparably if that horse had fallen over with me on it. <laughs> Possibly even died. But thankfully, my aunt and uncle, being the smart people that they are, realized, oh, we'll, we'll take you off. We won't, we won't offer that <laughs> Maybe, anymore. Maybe he doesn't want to be on the horse. <laughs> I'm generally not a fan of animals bigger than me. <laughs> that's, that's fair. <laughs> and then the other time I was on a horse was at a birthday party at a church. Don't ask. But there, was a pony, there were pony rides. <laughs> And I got coerced into riding it. How old were you for this, vaguely? Like 12 or 13. Okay. And the enough, entire... enough to tell someone no thank you to the horse option. They weren't having it. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't having it. Oh my god. <laughs> Feeling a horse like, walk, like move under you and like shift its weight is the most uncomfortable thing on the planet for me. It because the entire right. time it feels like it's not stable even though it's staying upright and moving. Is, yeah. Just because it's constantly wiggling around. Yeah. 
It was, I mean, maybe the horse was, like, extra tired because this was already, like, midday, and it was like, man, fuck this shit. Stupid kids. This, this is, like, the th 30th kid I've given a ride to, and this one's really fat. <laughs> oh, it's just like... So it's basically, like, two kids. Yeah. Ah, oh, jeez. I don't get paid enough for this shit. So we just went in there, grab Johnny, and be like, we need your help for the other corpse parts. Bye. We, we need the other Jesus burritos. Because, yeah, the president of the United States is the antagonist in part seven. I kind of love that. President Valentine. His stand, uh... Of course he's a stand user. His of course stand, is, stand is Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Abbreviated D4C. Oh my god. And it basically lets him, like, pull you into a parallel universe where just multiple versions of him beat your ass. <laughs> That's pretty much it. That's kind of awesome. It's kind of cool. He throws an American flag on you to like warp you into the, yeah. Can we just have a team of evil presidents? <laughs> evil presidents? Like President what Armstrong are... from well, Middle he's Europe. a senator. Oh, so oh, I'm sorry. Just political figures? Yeah, just yeah, evil yeah. political figures that... So, President Valentine, Senator Armstrong, uh... The Pope and Devil May Cry. There's a Pope fight. Yep. No, I, I've, I've done. I've done enough. <laughs> the, the DMC4 Pope fight is pretty good. Oh, hey, rappers. Oh yeah, I forgot that that was a thing in this part. Uh, I'm pretty sure at, in this level, that's the hazard. Is the they'll attack basically whatever is closest to them that is moving. Ah. True. Ra true dinosaur fashion. In true. In true raptor fashion. As they are water. What other evil political? Or just powerful figures are there that aren't normally evil? That aren't normally? Yeah. I mean, because I mean, the Pope isn't normally an evil figure. You don't know that. I mean, the one before Francis, Pope Francis, is was was kind of evil. I mean, people called him Darth Sidious. <laughs> I remember that. Because he looked, he was one shady looking motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he was. Like, he was the type to definitely wear a hood with a dark shadow over his face. <laughs> Mint, like, rubbing his hands together, saying, Good, good. Do it. Do it. Um, I can't think of any, though, actually. I mean, three, three is pretty good. Dude, I can't wait to play Rising. Oh my god. Because Armstrong literally says, Make America Great Again. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, speaking of video games, PlayStation Experience happened last weekend. There's actually some hot gaming news. Uh, do tell, because I, I am out of the loop gaming wise. Well, it's most of the shit I show, showed you. Oh, okay. From that. Oh, yeah, that. It was basically like E3, but just for Sony. So, uh, Crash Bandicoot HD Remastered Trilogy. That's we'll be, gonna happen. We'll be playing that with a mystery special guest that Balrog doesn't know. No, I don't know. But I know a guy. You know a guy? He's an expert in bandicoots. Oh, boy. Uh, what else? He, he is quite familiar with that particular brand of marsupial. Yes, right. very. Uh, Death Stranding, another nonsense trailer from Kojima's new game. Oh, Kojima's my God, what game. the fuck is that game? Even, even the actors that are mocap for that, like Mads Mikkelsen is the the dude in that, the new one. He's like, I only kind of know what this is, <laughs> this is about. Like, what is what goes on in Kojima's head? I don't know, but I know I'm going to buy it, and that's Does the problem. Does he just op open up a dictionary to several different pages blindly point out a word and it's like babies oil invisible <laughs> and he's like yes i can work also, with this if you play the e3 trailer and the new one like side by side like side by side the moment that the baby disappears in norman reese's hands it appears in the pod in um guillermo del toro's thing what yeah <laughs> oh my god that's nuts <laughs> kojima don't do this uh, new Marvel! Oh yeah, Marvel baby! Marvel baby! The thing that we were told we were never Marvel getting. Marvel 3 came out five years ago. Really? Shit. Yeah. But that's the thing we were told we were we never going to get. We was the verboten game. Well, I guess what happened was Disney like stopped doing the licensing stuff because they're like, we are got our own in-house stuff, and that blew up in their face so hard. So they're back to licensing their shit out. Good, because Disney doesn't know fuck all when it comes... Did I to, even get to the licensing their properties for gaming? All right, I got some Johnny now. Horse, to look at this horse! <laughs> what? Horse tornado? Horse tornado. So this is just fight the raptors. 
Um, oh god, knowing that those are fingernails can, freaks me out. You can kind of see above his um his health bar. Number, seven, number yeah. of fingernails. Oh, he controls like shit. I don't understand. Triangle's like a charge, and then I can go shoot. Uh, oh, these are... What the hell? What in the hell? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. I'm useless without my horse. Wait, is he... disabled? Yeah. I have no idea. I just thought he was really... Like, oh, God. Act, like, weak in the desert. Horse, please. Okay. So I guess I'm just gonna shoot some raptors. Yeah, I just... thought he was, like, overheated in the desert and he just was too tired to stand. Well, ain't that something. You learn something every day. God damn it. At least he can dash. <laughs> That's actually fat. Oh. I didn't realize they have a little stamina meter, which is how much you can, you can do that. Oh. There's something that strikes me as very wrong about shooting a raptor in the butt with fingernails. Don't think about it too hard. Thank you, too, too late. Oh, too late. I thought about it a little too hard. <clears throat> so yeah, also too New Marvel is, um... It's actually the first game developed in-house by Capcom by them themselves in oh. like 10 or 15 years. Because most of the recent ones like Street Fighter 4 and 5 and Ultimate Marvel and stuff, that was all outsourced to other other devs. They just kind of oversaw it. Yep. But they're doing this one all by themselves this time. I, I, first I time hope for the first is... time since like Marvel 2, I think. And that was a real good game. And it's a lot of people who are on the same teams for Marvel vs. Capcom, X-Men, Children of the Atom. All of the PS1 era fight and games, it's a lot of the same people. So, so I'm I'm really hoping this is like a Capcom's meteoric rise back to power. I want it so bad because they've made a lot of kind of shitty decisions over the last um, few years. Yes, yes, they have, and hopefully this bodes well. I hope it goes very well. Because I certainly have high hopes. We'll be playing that. We'll play that a lot. Yes, we will. Mega Man's in it. Guess who wasn't in Marvel 3 at all? Mega Man. <laughs> Maybe this is them being like, oh, we're so sorry about Mighty Number no. 9. Please come back. Oof. Man, Mighty Number no. 9 was not great. You you tried. Deal. The deal? It really sucks how bad Mighty Number no. 9 was, too. Because, like, that was, like, the game that kind of kicked off the Kickstarter craze along with Double Fine stuff. Yeah. And it was a huge steaming turd. Yeah. There were a couple other games that I followed through Kickstarter that have yet to come through. Like, I didn't back them, but I've been... But like, you... Yeah, you're like... I kept an eye on them because it's like, this it, seems yeah. like a really cool game or it's going to be an interesting narrative. Yeah. Like, uh, A Night in the Woods mm. was supposed to come out six months ago. But is it out? No, no, not yet. Okay. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe it is. Let me let me actually check. Yeah, Double Fine's games at least come out, but um, Broken Age had some trouble because they ran out of money. They had to do like that's why they released it in halves because they had to sell the first half to make money to actually finish the game. <laughs> that's so sad. Because they used up all of their Kickstarter money. If you actually ever get to watch the the guys who did the earlier seasons of. Penny Arcade TV, two-player, yep. they did a documentary on Double Find while they were making that game. Yep. And so it's a lot of Tim Schafer talking about, like, I hope we can finish this game before everybody realizes we have no money. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Come on, give me that sweet, sweet details. Because I thought I heard a game by this title that you were talking about, but maybe I'm thinking of a different game entirely they kind of weird kickstarter games tend to kind of blend together after a while uh, man all the fucking updates are backers only all right you're up fight the dios oh shit okay <laughs> oh, oh yeah. damn well it. whoever do you want to control i recommend controlling jonathan because johnny controls weird yeah i'm i'm willing to trust the ai on johnny yeah maybe maybe they know something i don't but it just felt like triangle was to ram them with horse 
square was to shoot nail bullets, and then I had nothing else besides that. Oh, tells us what we could get from it. Well, no, I don't wait, remember wait, wait, any wait, of these the mystery. Uh, R2 block. I need that one, yes. X is jump, square is basic attack combos, triangle is like heavy and unblockables and stuff. All right. Remember, Finish to do your baby. specials, you hold L1 to bring up the menu, and then you yes. can press. Okay. That one I d took way too it's long. It's basically, yeah, it's basically like a hold, hold toggle to access your specials. Oh, and R3 is locking. I really don't understand the logic behind Zoom Punch and how it works. I'm not actually sure what it does, but it fills up a little meter above his health bar. But I don't know what it does. Oops. Ah. Alright then. There we go. The really funny part to me about Part 7 is that uh, Gyro Zeppeli, his partner, uh, basically has grills on his teeth, but this takes place in like the 1800s. <laughs> Oh, and uh, L2 is the dash. That's what I was trying to remember. Hey, his, I his item senses are tingling. He's gotta go. You just knock him over the wall. Damn right I did. <laughs> Get back here, nerd. Oh, uh, that's funny. Bet you shed bullets now. I kind of do. Look out, dinosaur! Alright then. Ah, dude. I like how your momentum actually flung you off the ledge a little bit. I don't remember him having this spear thing, unless I'm wrong. Well, what's Johnny doing this whole time? <laughs> Hobbling around. Fucking Donkey Kong barrel. There we go. Sunlit Yellow Overdrive is actually like one of my favorite stupid super moves. It just looks really cool. It does. <clears throat> hey, that went very well. Oh, good. I really felt like I did nothing up until that point. <laughs> Other than chasing one of them over a wall repeatedly. Like three times, yeah. I like Jonathan's super manly pose. <laughs> Game's too fabulous. They're, they're like doing Vogue poses. <laughs> yeah, they are, yeah, they are. Oh man, you got some jojolity. Hell yeah. Nice. Bling, bling. Hey, yeah, Dio costume and colors. Good, good, good. That's what we want. We'll continue the next battle on the next episode.
Already? Wow. Time's just flying by.